Hello everyone, this is Mike with the National Weather Service in Wilmington, North Carolina for a quick briefing for Northeast South Carolina and Southeast North Carolina for Hurricane Isaias. This information is current as of 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time for Friday, July 31st. If you're using this information after 6 p.m. Friday, July 31st, the information may have changed. For the latest information, you can always go to weather.gov slash ILM or go to hurricanes.gov for the latest information on Hurricane Isaias. So what has changed since this morning? The track has nudged slightly to the west, it's slightly slower, and the storm is very close to our coast on Monday. The chances for local impact continues to gradually increase as the storm approaches. The track for the storm has nudged slightly west, it's slightly slower, and it's very close to the coastline for the Cape Fear region Monday. Some strengthening for the storm is expected over the next day before leveling off in intensity. Regardless of what category the storm is though, impacts are likely for the Carolinas. The magnitude of the impacts is still uncertain, especially with the winds, surge, and rainfall depending on which track this storm takes. We are confident that the rip current threat will increase into and through this weekend with other marine hazards offshore shortly after for the coastal waters. A more westward track and a more eastern track is still in the range of possibilities and depending if it's more western or eastern for the track we could see very very different impacts so it's still too early to tell exactly which way the storm will head but right now it looks like it will pass very close to the Carolina coast but just a reminder to not focus on the exact track the impacts could still occur well outside the area of the cone in this graphic here on the left Hurricane Isaias could bring us some wind storm surge, flooding rains, tornadoes, and even marine threats. The confidence is the highest and for moderate impact from marine hazards, but it's still too early to tell the extent and the magnitude of these different hazards. But please stay tuned for the latest forecast information as these threats and magnitudes become clearer in the next several days. We are expecting moderate impacts for wind and marine, and the confidence is the highest in marine impacts with rip currents that could be dangerous along the coastline as well as rough seas and other conditions offshore. We have low confidence for wind even though it would be a moderate impact. We're still trying to time down exactly where the storm will pass. So depending on the track we could see very different wind impacts. We are also moderately confident in some river flooding and some isolated flooding in poor drainage in low-lying areas. However, the impact is expected to be low. The likelihood of seeing tropical storm force winds or winds greater than 39 miles per hour are increasing across the area, especially for Monday morning and Monday evening. A little closer look into the Cape Fear region for seeing winds greater than 39 miles per hour. We're seeing right along the immediate coastline a 30% chance for experiencing such winds and the percentage gradually decreases the further inland you head. However, it's still too early to tell exactly where the wind impacts will be or the magnitude depending on the track of the storm. If it goes a little bit more west, we could see higher percentages here. So as of right now, we're seeing anywhere between a 5 and 30 percent chance. However, stay tuned for the latest forecast in the coming days as these percentages could change. The probability of seeing 50 knot wind speeds or damaging wind potential, this is the same threshold we use for severe thunderstorm warnings. The chances are relatively low as of right now, but this could change as the ch storm track changes as well. So we could see anywhere between a 5 and 10 percent chance, but again, this could change as the track changes. So stay tuned in the next coming days for the latest information. Hurricane Isaias could bring us some heavy rainfall, anywhere from 2 to 4 inches inland to just over 4 inches along the coastline. However, any subtle change in the track can drastically change the rainfall forecast and the potential flood impacts that we could see. The main concerns are for rivers, main stem rivers, and poor drainage in low-lying areas, especially near the coast. We're not expecting rainfall to be a significant problem given the storm's forward speed. However, it's still a concern to keep an eye on in the coming days. Here are the key takeaways for Hurricane Isaias. It's still too early to tell exactly what the main impacts will be and the magnitude of those impacts. However, everything on the table from wind, storm surge, flooding rains, tornadoes, 
marine impacts and potential river flooding is on the table at this time. The next briefing with updated information will be available by 6 p.m. tonight, Friday, July 31st. And you can get that on www.weather.gov slash ILM slash briefing. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as our page at weather.gov slash ILM and click on the map for your location for the latest updates. Thanks for watching and stay safe.